Okay, before I start today's RetroBat setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. And if you're interested in RetroBat as a front end, I have an entire playlist dedicated to RetroBat. So before asking if I've done this and I've done that, check out the playlist. It's quite likely I've covered it at this point. So anyways, we're looking at the Atari 800 and how to run this through RetroBat. Now, the first thing I'm gonna say is, yes, I've got Kingpin as my desktop wallpaper, and that's simply to cheer me up today. I'm feeling a bit under the weather, but I'm gonna get through it with your help. So, <laughs> what we're gonna do then first is check out what we actually need for Atari 800. So, I'm gonna leave the link in my description, and this is the wiki for RetroBat systems. So, for Atari 800, we're gonna need four BIOS files, as we can see just here. We got Atari XL.ROM, Atari Bass.ROM, Atari OSA.ROM, and Atari OSB.ROM. So I've got these ready to go, and I'm gonna show you where to put those in a minute. And if we just scroll up just a touch, under information, we're gonna find the emulators for Atari 800 within RetroBat. Now, obviously, Libretro isn't an emulator, but this is a core, so it's a RetroArch core. Remember, Libretro is RetroArch. And under file extensions, we're gonna find the file extensions that we need for our games to be in. Now, because I'm not a massive Atari fan, I don't know too much about the file extensions, if I'm honest, but after researching, the only files I do come across is the .xex. Now, if you have any other of these file extensions in your Atari 800 collection, or Atari Giants collection, however way you look at it, uh, you'll likely have .roms or even something like .cas. Now, I'd imagine the .rom is a cartridge type file and the cas is gonna be some sort of cassette tape image file. But like I said, the only two games I've got are in .xex. And according to the information here on the RetroBat wiki, it's perfectly accepted. So what we're gonna do then is go into the RetroBat directory. So right click on the shortcut, open file location, and we're gonna put those BIOS files into place. So we're gonna find the BIOS folder just here. And what we're gonna do is just drag inside of that folder those four Atari BIOS files. So they just go inside, move to the BIOS folder, Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is actually put our games into the RetroBat ROMs folder. So open up ROMs, and from here, you're gonna find Atari 800. If you just scroll down. So there are several Atari systems supported by RetroBat. If I go into Atari 800, I've got my two games here, and these are two modern homebrew games. And I'm gonna show you in a second, if you're interested in modern Atari 800 games, where to get these. So we got the game Albert and we got another game called Cyber Exo, which is quite a recent release. I'm going to leave the link in my description for this, but this is Atari Mania. And from time to time, I use this to check up on Atari ST games. So all of these games just here are a mixture of classic Atari under games or Atari giant games, as well as modern homebrew games. Uh, you've also got itch.io, which I don't recommend enough. It's a very good website for modern day games for vintage or retro platforms. If you just type into itch.io, Atari, for example, you'll find lots of different games for Atari. I mean, even the Atari 2600 is um, still being developed for today, interestingly. Uh, very basic, not my era, but if you like it, you like it. My mum and dad, being the age they are, I'm afraid to say, um, they've sort of had an Atari 2600 in the late 70s, and they've got fond memories of it. So, yes, HIO was a very good source to grab some modern-day Atari games. So, with the BIOS files and the games in place, if we just open up RetroBat, So once we're inside a retro bat, you should now see Atari 800 appear. So if I just go into that folder, 
I'm going to find my games here. Now, it's going to be very, very unlikely that these two modern day Atari 800 games are going to have any artwork for it. But we're going to try. If I go to main menu by pressing start on my controller, just go down to scraper and scraper settings, just select the type of artwork you want and just simply go down to scrape now. And just to mention, if you're interested in themes in Retrobat, I actually uploaded a massive video which gives a showcase of every Retrobat theme available as of now. So check that one out, it's pretty good if you don't fancy downloading every theme in Retrobat. And also check out my marathon videos which I've sort of released in the last couple of weeks. It's massive chunks of different setup guides which I've been doing for the past, say, year and a half. So whilst this is scraping, something else we're going to do is by going to view options, by pressing select, advanced system options. Now, like we just noted on the wiki, it said that it's only supported by a RetroArch core, which is actually titled Atari 800. Interestingly, I covered that one a little while back as a standalone emulator and it works really well. But anyways, this is our main settings window for the Atari 800 core, the Atari 800 core. Uh, from here, we got lots of different visual settings, but I'm going to get into that in a second. What we need to do then, the games have been scraped, so I'm going to go to game settings, update game list, and yes. And I'm very surprised by that, that one of these modern games is actually scraped. So obviously it looks a little bit strange at the moment due to the theme I'm using. So I'm going to just quickly change the theme by going to main menu, user interface settings, theme set. And I've got all my themes from the theme showcase, which I was talking about the other day. But very quickly, I'm going to just put this to something a little bit more basic. Simple life. Let's see what this is about. There we go. That's a bit more acceptable. Okay, so I'm going to choose this game just to test this. So should you come across a screen like this, it's asking us for more memory. It's also saying that we need to change the model of Atari to at least the 130 XC model. It says press any key. And again, it's just telling us we need to be running this through a different source of emulation for Atari giant computer. So if we just exit out of this by pressing your hotkeys. So in order to change the model of Atari that you're attempting to emulate, if you just go to view options, advanced system options, under emulation here at the bottom, emulated system, right at the bottom just here, it's gonna say 130XE, which is 128K model. So this is what that game is asking us for. So I've never played this game before and I'm actually gonna try this. So I'm gonna go back into the game And that's it, so we're now booted up into the game since changing the emulated model to the 130 XC, 128 kilobyte. And for those of you interested, I actually uploaded, randomly uploaded, uh, Retro Games Limited Atari 400 Mini, which is coming out this year. Okay, so we can see that game's working really well. I have no idea what's doing that game, but it appears to be a conversion of another game. Like I say, I'm not a big um, follower of the Atari scene, not particularly so. Uh, anyways, let's look at some video settings. If I go to view options by pressing select, advanced system options, from here we can go to shader set. Now, by applying a shader set, 
it's going to make the game look a bit different. So my good example of a shader set is going to be Curvature. If we put that on, it's going to give us an old CRT TV look. So kind of like an oval-ish shape-ish. Uh, we also got scan lines here to apply. And if we go to decorations, as you notice during that gameplay, um, the Atari 800 or Atari Giant computer has a decoration around the side, uh, which is default unglazed at the bottom there. We can actually take that one off if you don't want it by going to none, or you can simply change it to another decoration. Let me just remind you, if you want to go for a full screen or even a 16 by nine ratio, then don't apply a decoration. Otherwise, a lot of your game image will be hiding away because you've got that decoration in place. If I just go for none for now on this, and game aspect ratio, like I was just saying, if you want to apply a decoration, then just stick with auto or four by three. And remember by selecting auto, Retrobat is gonna select the very next option, which is four by three. If I go to integer scaling, what this is gonna do it's just give us a little bit more of a better picture, but for something like Atari, I think it's the pixels which makes it look really nice and gives it that nostalgic look still. And under vertical sync, I always recommend putting this one onto yes. Vertical sync takes away screen tear. Now, vertical sync really is better off on modern day games or maybe in the last 20 years where games become 3D. On something like the Atari Commodore 64 ZX Spectrum, doesn't really matter. But anyways, I just say put this on. Internal resolution, we can go up to 400 by 300. And of course, just here, native 336 by 240 is telling us that that is the actual original resolution of the Atari computers. I might be wrong, so if I am wrong about that, let me know in the comments. Now, if we go down visual rendering, we got some more options here. We got video filters, so we can apply video filters such as extra scan lines. And we also got smoothing games by linear filtering. Turn this one on, although this one's already selected to on by auto. And if we go down to create pad to key profile, this is interesting. If there's an Atari game that doesn't respond with a controller, then you can actually map out the keys required by that game to convert it to your controller, if that makes sense. So for example, if I go to D-pad up and I press A on my Xbox controller, this is going to bring up a virtual keyboard. Now, say for example, a game you want to play requires you pressing the W key to act upwards for your game sprite to go up. Then just press on W and that's going to map out your controller. Whilst pressing up on your D-pad, it's going to think it's the keyboard pressing W. So map that out. And always remember to go to the bottom and save. So that's it for today's Retro Bat and Atari 800 setup guide. As you could see in that video, uh, the Atari 800 core doesn't only support the Atari 800 model, uh, but various other Atari Giant computers. And I keep saying Giant because uh, the Atari 8-bit computers, microcomputers, were known as Giants, apparently. But like I said, I'm pretty um, not quite clued up with the Atari computers. Um, I'm more of a Commodore 64 or a Commodore Amiga fan. But anyways, I thought I would cover it because it's a part of Retrobat and it goes with my collection of Retrobat setup guides. And I'm aware that there's still a big, strong fan base for Atari computers out there. Anyways, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also, be sure to join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. And also consider donating to my channel if you don't fancy becoming a member of my membership option on my YouTube channel as you're watching. I always accept donations through PayPal. And even if it's a dollar or a pound, I'm always grateful and it helps my try out a great deal. I'm currently saving up to get a decent microphone. But anyways, until next time, stay retro.